In 2020, the Dodgers finally did it. They did the thing. They won it all. Now, you can argue the legitimacy of that championship compared to every other one in history. Not that you can punish the Dodgers, as they had no say in the pandemic happening. Along with a 60-game season with no fans allowed in the ballparks, they did all they could do. It's not about the Dodgers. It's more about the fact that any team who won in 2020 was going to have to have an asterisk next to their title just for the sheer fact that it was such a different kind of season. But that's beside the point. The Dodgers finally won the World Series and their dominance continued. 2020 was the 8th straight season ending in a division win for the Dodgers, 8 in a row. So what did they do to get ready for 2021? Signed the 2020 National League Cy Young winner Trevor Bauer to a massive contract. They had just won the division for the 8th straight year and won the World Series, and then got better. And they certainly played like they got better, or at least didn't skip a beat. Trevor Bauer drama aside, the Dodgers had a real fun time in 2021. They were incredible, going on to win 106 games, tying the 2019 team for most wins in franchise history, yet there was a noticeable change from the last almost decade. The Dodgers didn't win the division. Wait, what? Okay, so surely it had to be the newly popular San Diego Padres. You know, the team that has Fernando Tatis Jr. and Manny Machado leading the offense, with the front office going out and adding Hugh Darvish and Blake Snell to an already strong rotation. Although the Dodgers still had the better team on paper, if they weren't going to win the NL West, it had to be the loaded Padres, right? Nope. It was the San Francisco Giants, the team that had finished in a distant third place in 2020, with the same thing happening in the last full season heading into 2021-2019, where the Giants finished 29 games back of the Dodgers. They have no superstars, a ton of under-the-radar players. How on earth did the Giants one-up the elite Dodgers in the regular season in 2021? I don't think we even know to this day, but what we can at least do is see what happened and take it for what it is. To start, the offense. The 2021 San Francisco Giants offense consisted of guys having career seasons and unknown guys making a name for themselves. Evan Longoria played in exactly half the team's games and was productive, Mike Yastrzemski was solid, and so was Steven Duggar along with Donovan Solano. Wilmer Flores and Lamont Wade Jr. were good, and then you had the guys doing the heavy lifting. Brandon Belt has always been a solid player for the Giants, but I don't think anybody expected him to hit to a 975 OPS. Brandon Crawford is another guy with that exact same situation. He's always been a solid giant, but did anybody in the world predict him to hit to an OPS at almost 900? Not at all. Darren Ruff came out of the clouds to hit 271 with an OPS over 900, swanning 16 homers, and Buster Posey was Buster Posey. At least that wasn't out of the ordinary, but the most fascinating thing about this Giants offense was the age factor. The youngest everyday hitter in the lineup was 27, which was Lamont Wade Jr. The average age of the 14 most productive hitters on the 2021 Giants was 31. That was the oldest team of hitters in all of baseball. As far as the pitching went, it was only almost the same situation as the hitting. They only had one starting pitcher under 30 years old, and it was Logan Webb who was 24 in his rookie year. And he was a stud. In 26 starts, Webb threw over 148 innings with a 3.03 ERA, striking out 158 hitters. Other than the youngster Webb, the Giants' rotation was filled with veterans having career years and then Johnny Cueto. Anthony Deslafani made 31 starts, throwing 167 and two-thirds innings with a 3.17 ERA, which was easily the best season of his career. Alex Wood was solid, Johnny Cueto was a solid number five starter, and as for the man who led the way, Kevin Gossman. Gossman is a guy who bet on himself before the season even began, taking the qualifying offer from the Giants rather than becoming a free agent, and that decision ended up working out for him big time. He'd make 33 starts for the Giants in 2021, throwing 192 innings with a 2.81 ERA, striking out 227 hitters, winning 14 games, and finishing 6th in the NL Cy Young voting. As for the bullpen, the Giants didn't have any sort of lockdown closer. None of them were elite, sexy strikeout gods or nearly the best in the league, but they got the job done and closed out ball games for the Giants, and that's all that mattered. Jake McGee was the closer, saving 31 games and pitching to a 2.72 ERA, striking out 58 hitters and 59 and two-thirds innings. The submariner Tyler Rogers was the biggest weapon out of the pen, throwing 81 innings to the tune of a 2.22 ERA, striking out 55 hitters. The rest of the pen was good, including guys like Yarlin Garcia, Jose Alvarez, Dominic Leone, and Zach Little, who will become important later on, remember the name. Overall, the bullpen was a huge reason as to why the Giants 
Giants eclipse the Dodgers and wins at year's end, winning 107 games in the National League West Division, and became the number one seed in baseball. The Dodgers walked off the Cardinals in the wildcard game, and with that, for the first time in history, the Giants and Dodgers would face off in the postseason. The series started out with the Giants' win, as Logan Webb did his thing, blanking the Dodgers and taking a 1-0 series lead. The Dodgers made up for that lack of scoring in Game 2, crossing the plate 9 times and winning 9-2 to to nod the series up heading back to LA, where an Evan Longoria solo home run would be the only run in Game 3 as the Giants took a 2-1 series lead. At this point, the series seemed kinda over and destined for the Giants to win. Even after the Dodgers won big in Game 4 by a score of 7-2, the Giants were still headed back home for a Game 5. A Corey Seager double in the 8th made it 1-0 Dodgers, with the unsung Giants hero Darren Ruff tying it with a bomb later in the inning, and then came the ninth. Cody Bellinger, who had done virtually nothing all year for the team, would knock in the go-ahead run for the Dodgers in the top of the ninth, and in came Max Scherzer to close things out. With the tying run on first base, Scherzer would strike out Lamont Wade Jr. and Wilmer Flores to end the series. There's no getting around it. The Giants got screwed with the final check swing call, but there's nothing they could do about it, and the season was over. As good as the Giants were in 2021, the success they had, the wins they piled up, it just didn't seem sustainable. They did lose ace Kevin Gosman, but replaced him with Carlos Rodon. The big franchise loss, however, was Buster Posey, someone who decided to hang up the cleats and call it a career. Even with that, they still had a really good team, at least mostly the team they had from 21, but could we expect everyone to replicate what they just did? Probably not. With that said, the beginning of the season showed promise. In April, the Giants played their way to a 14-7 record. They showed flashes of the 2021 success, but only followed it up with a mediocre May and June. Since July, it's been kind of ugly. Their combined record in July and August was 21-34. September's been a bit better, but as far as October goes for 2022, the San Francisco Giants will be missing out on the party just one calendar year after having the best record in baseball. They're not a horrible team by any means, they're just not very good and are just kind of there. So how exactly did this happen? How did these Giants fall off so much? To start, the offense. Brandon Belt, the man who went to a 975 OPS in 2021, has been hurt most of 2022, but when he has played, hit to an OPS almost exactly 300 points lower. Young catcher Joey Bart hasn't hit well, neither has Mike Yastrzemski, and Brandon Crawford, someone who hit to an OPS of almost 900 last season, like I said, has one under 650 in 2022. First time giant Jock Peterson has far and away been the best hitter on the team, but other than him, there's honestly nothing really there to ooh and ah about. I mean, Austin Slater, Evan Longoria, and Thyro Estrada have been kind of solid, but that's about it. The offense just isn't good. As for the starting rotation, it's actually not that bad, and the Giants have something there to be proud of. Logan Webb has taken a step forward, throwing over 185 innings with a sub-3 ERA, striking out 156 hitters. Carlos Rodon has had a good season too, throwing over 165 innings with a 2.84 ERA, striking out 220 hitters. And Alex Cobb has been a real solid number 3 starter with an ERA around 3.5. Alex Wood has struggled and dealt with injuries, although he has gotten unlucky, and the same goes for Jacob Junis as far as the unlucky factor goes. Young reliever Camilo Doval has potential to be a real stud out of the back end of that bullpen. I mean, the dude throws north of 100 miles an hour with a nasty off-speed pitch. John Brebby has been good, and so has Harlan Garcia. So as you can see, the pitching has actually been solid this year, but when you have an offense that is as below average as the Giants one is, it's going to be real hard to compete out in the West with the Dodgers and Padres. I think a valid question that can be asked about the 2022 Giants is the clubhouse factor, and if Gabe Kapler is still the right leader for this franchise. I have been very supportive of the Giants manager Gabe Kapler and his attitude of breaking the unwritten rules of baseball. I love that. Screw people's feelings and do what you can to win ball games as long as it's not cheating. With that being said, there was an incident between Kapler and one of his own players that may have shown a little bit of a disconnect there. Zach Little, remember him? Solid reliever for the Giants last year when they won 107 games. Well, he hasn't lived up to the hype either, just like the team in 2022, pitching to an ERA north of 5 but it's what happened in a recent game that made the rounds on the internet. Zach Little was pitching against the Braves, and just like he has all year, did bad. He gave up two runs on three hits and a walk, forcing Kapler to of course come out and take his reliever out of the game, only for Little to say something to Kapler on his way off the mound. 
Kapler kept his cool, gave the ball to the next reliever, went back to the dugout, and walked Little to the clubhouse where the two had what I'm sure was a heated conversation. It was incredibly weird to see Little publicly disrespect Kapler like he did. I mean, why would he be mad he's getting taken out after giving up two runs? There's probably more to it, but the very next day, Little was sent down to AAA. The two are fine now, with Little saying he went into Kapler's office to apologize again after the game, but it's never a good look when someone shows up their own manager. Do I think Gabe Kapler's lost the clubhouse? Not necessarily, no. I don't think one isolated incident proves that. But one thing is for certain, which is that the San Francisco Giants regressed a whole lot from last year to this year. Meanwhile, the Dodgers continue to dominate baseball and have won the NOS for the ninth time in the last 10 years. It's insane. The Giants weren't expected to replicate what happened in 2021, but I don't think they were expected to be quite this below average. Maybe Kapler has a little something to do with it, or not, but this team has a lot of offensive holes to fill and improve on for 2023.